So this is my interpretation of Sing Song by Christina Rossetti. With her short and lyrically simple nursery rhymes, Christina Rossetti guides the reader through different phases of life while also aiming to teach simple moral lessons in her collection titled Sing Song. Shifts in societal values around the Victorian era allowed this remarkably well-crafted and structured book to instill children with good values while still providing entertainment. Rossetti's use of rhyme, illustrations, narrative, and much more create a collection of poems that can serve as an ethical and moral guide for children, as well as remind them to enjoy their childhood while it lasts. Until the mid to late 18th century, children's literature mainly served as a means to propagate religious values and promote society's view that honest work and perseverance led to a happy, productive life. So these stories were more or less meant to guide kids away from sin and disobedience and teach right and wrong rather than provide entertainment. Because of this, books in this period felt more like textbooks used for educational purposes rather than something a kid would read for fun. But by the Victorian era, <clears throat> people were beginning to put more focus on the entertainment factor of kids' stories. Childhood as a societal construct was an evolving idea at the time, and it was moving away from its Christian attachments. Before, most people believed children were born with the original sin, as the Bible states, but now they were beginning to think that children were inherently innocent and were only corrupted through negative experiences with the world. People were starting to see the importance of childhood being a time of innocence, freedom, spontaneity, and malleability. Being naive and making innocent mistakes were simply a part of growing up, but so was having fun, which is why it was really important that these stories started to include that idea. Sing Song, especially with its lyrical qualities and illustrations, appealed to the entertainment aspect of reading. While many of the poems have moral lessons weaved into a cute story, some are just sweet nursery rhymes a kid might repeat on a playground. And these are just as important to the collection as the deeper poems. Kids books still included overarching moral or ethical lessons in the Victorian era, just as they do today. But they began to include simple and amusing illustrations and narratives that reflected the life of a child. With the help of Arthur Hughes's illustrations, Christina Rossetti's Sing Song integrates important lessons with childhood fun. Take the poem, The Days Are Clear, for example. The days are clear day after day, when April's here that leads to May, and June must follow soon. Stay, June, stay, if only we could stop the moon and June. <clears throat> Not much is conveyed in this poem besides the speaker's longing for June to stay, likely because it's a warm summer month and a kid would have the most opportunities to play outside. But with the accompanying illustration, the meaning deepens. And if I had the picture, I would show you, but I don't know how to do that with the video. Uh, but the picture shows a young girl lifting another girl up who has her arms outstretched towards a crescent moon. The young girl is literally reaching for the moon. In other words, she desires something that is unattainable, which in this case would be for June to stay. In this example, text and image work almost in a dialogue. Where Rossetti's narrative falls short, Hughes's drawing continues the story. The additional or reinforced idea conveyed here through the image is that children should have goals and reach for the impossible. Another example is the poem poem, Hopping Frog, Hop Here and Be Seen. To summarize, two kids, one of which who appears to be frightened as he cowers behind the other kid, come across a frog. The other child, who appears to be calm, reaches out their hand toward this, towards the creature. The speaker essentially says that although the toad might be creepy, they know it's harmless and won't hurt them, so they won't hurt it in return. The moral in this poem, which actually comes up a lot throughout the collection, is to be kind to animals. Uh, Hughes's illustration here adds a visual component that is able to continue the narrative and convey something the text does not. Although the text implies the children merely accept the toad's existence, the, the drawing shows not only acceptance but respect as well. Um, the older child, who quite bravely reaches their hand out, um, is teaching the younger boy that there's nothing to be afraid of and that they can all live in harmony. 
While the shift in societal values on childhood meant more fun and easily digestible reading, people still felt kids needed to learn about tough subjects. While plenty of this book is lighthearted, just as much of it goes into morbid and depressing topics like class struggles, orphanhood, sin, and even death. In fact, Christina Rossetti has been criticized for her obsession with death and its overwhelming presence in her work, but people were particularly concerned with the amount of death, especially child death, in Sing Song because it's a kid's book. But I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. At the time, it was really common for babies and mothers to die during childbirth, and a lack of good hygiene meant kids were more susceptible to illness. It was a real concern people had, so it makes sense that that concern was passed on to other to kids through reading. Not to mention, Rossetti manages to communicate important messages about death. Even when a poem centers around death, she often tries to conclude the narrative in a positive way or find the silver lining. One of many examples of this is the poem A Baby's Cradle with No Baby in it. The poem reads, A baby's cradle with no baby in it. A baby's grave where autumn leaves drop sear, the sweet soul gathered home to paradise, the body waiting here. While still incredibly sad, Rossetti includes the third line to suggest that the child is in a better place, perhaps heaven given that paradise is capitalized. Another important set of poems about child death is on pages 24 and 25. The sequence of these two poems is particularly important as they clearly illustrate that Rossetti was thinking about the idea of accepting both negative and positive experiences for what they are. The first poem, Why Did Baby Die?, explains that the child's death had a great impact on the parents. The baby is described as a flower that only bloomed to die, and the final question the speaker asks is why this had to happen. But the very next poem offers some consolation, still a little bit of a hard truth though. In If All Were Rain and Never Sun, Rossetti writes, If all were rain and never sun, no bow could span the hill. If all were sun and never rain, there'd be no rainbow still. The arrangement of these two poems is significant because after hearing about a child dying and grieving parents, the reader, who is most likely also a child, reads directly after that, that while bad things happen, they are still important. It explains that we both we need both good and bad experiences in order to appreciate the good things even more. This sequence of poems is also an example of a greater idea in Sing Song, which is that life is cyclical. <clears throat> Various phases of life are covered throughout this collection, including dawn to dusk, winter to autumn, and most importantly, childhood to death. Rossetti artfully intertwines these topics to form a clear cyclical picture of life and growing up that emphasizes the order of events. The collection can be broken into three segments, beginnings, growth, and maturity. The first large portion of the book focuses mainly on babyhood, youth, and childhood antics, most of which I've already discussed, but I do want to point out that the book begins with a newborn in a cradle. Surrounded by angels in the picture and no mention of death in the text, the short four-line poem launches the reader into a new beginning. Then, in the next section of the book, Rossetti covers growing up, and of course, depicting death every so often. This part of the book is where more complex ideas are brought in, such as labor, class struggles, and gender roles. The poem, Minnie Bakes Oat and Cakes, is a perfect example from this section. Minnie bakes oat and cakes, Minnie brews ale, all because her Johnny's coming home from sea, and she glows like a rose who is so pale, and are you sure the church clock goes, says she. The main character of this poem, Minnie, is actually a recurring character throughout the book, so the reader has now seen her grow up and fall into the expected role of a woman. She's the homemaker, and she's making sure there is food prepared for the arrival of Johnny, who we can infer as her husband. Uh, there are many more poems in this portion of the collection that exemplify growth, and for the time period, they do a really great job at representing an introduction to adulthood uh, when somebody would be taking on more responsibilities and committing to gender norms. Nevertheless, the last third of the book 
is the most important in my opinion. It's surprising only at first that death is covered so much throughout all of Sing Song, but when the reader understands one of the main lessons of the book is for life and childhood to be cherished, it becomes less surprising. <laughs> By presenting death at every stage of life, Rossetti proves how precious life is. Similar to how the first section of the book depicts mostly babies or children, given that it represents beginnings, the last part of the book has a lot of older or elderly people, and several poems are about nighttime. The ending of the day is symbolic of an end to a life in this way. One of my favorite poems in near the end of the book is Goodbye in Fear, Goodbye in Sorrow, as it embodies almost everything I've discussed so far. The poem says, Goodbye in fear, goodbye in sorrow, Goodbye and all in vain, never depart again, Goodbye today, goodbye tomorrow, Goodbye till earth shall wane, Never to meet again, my dear, never depart again. Had to go into a little bit of a British accent there. <laughs> Once again, the image and text work together beautifully here. I interpret the message of this poem to be that while death, while death which pre prevents any more meetings between two people, is sorrowful, it also means they'll never have to part again, which is another very sad thing to go through. Uh, the illustration is very intriguing here as well because we don't know who is the one dying. It could be the kid or it could be the older person. The image of the two shaking hands is almost like an understanding or an agreement that neither will um, grieve for too long if the other dies. It introduces the idea that life goes on. In summary, Christina Rossetti's Sing Song teaches moral and ethical lessons by guiding children through various phases of life. Narrative, il narrative illustrations, arrangement of poems, and much more help Rossetti explain subjects such as right and wrong, gender roles, kindness, and even death. Overall, this is an important book showing societal values during the Victorian era, and in my opinion, it is very underrated. Thanks.